Hey man, welcome back to Man Time. Today's episode, we've got something in the box here. Uh, Holst Former just had a 30% off sale on some of their stuff, 10% off sale on some of their stuff. Uh, this one here, if you were smart enough to go to the Not USA Warehouse, you could find this saw, uh, the Holst Forma G660 Pro, for just over $300. And it just got here, so we're going to unbox it, see what's in the box. Uh, get some gas in it, fire it up, get some initial thoughts, get a couple heat cycles on it, and then I'll give you a tune that you can put on it that's going to work for me. Welcome to Man Time. Yeah, so I, I learned some interesting things when I when I bought this chainsaw. Um, I wouldn't have bought it, but I think this particular chainsaw fills a special need uh, for people like you and me out there that are getting by homesteading on a shoestring, shoestring budget. There's going to be a time when there's just a tree that's too big uh, for what normal folks can afford, right? Um, and I think that's where this saw really comes in into its own. Uh, I just did a video not too long ago about how the clone saws are not worth their weight in garbage, um, but that was for the top handle saw. And you can get top handle saws, you know, like I said, at the dealership for about 450 bucks. I got the G111 for 300 bucks with a bar and chain, but I ended up spending another hundred dollars on the carb, and then you know probably another hundred dollars on rubber. AV mounts, so on and so forth, from steel to get it up to where it's actually going to be reliable. Um, this one here is a little bit of a different story, but if stuff starts breaking, there again, you know, you're spending a hundred bucks here and a hundred bucks there at steel to get it up to where it's going to be reliable. But this is the Pro model, and uh, this will give me an opportunity to get some long-term testing on, you know, they've they've updated some things on it. So maybe this one will hold up better. But the niche that this fills is going to be for the bigger trees, right? This is a 92cc chainsaw. Uh, it is not going to be a chainsaw that everybody has laying around. And when you've got something that you need to put a three or four foot bar on uh, to get through with the stump, or you know you've got a huge tree that's died, you know you aren't going to run out to steel and get a, a well. The comparable saw is going to be about 1,300 bucks. Um, yeah, I think that's about right, about 1300 bucks, maybe 1400 something like that for the 661 maybe even 1500 now, somewhere's right in there. You aren't going to go and spend that if you've got one huge tree that died, like I have. I've got a gigantic oak tree, it's probably five foot on the stump. Um, I've got a, a big professional Husqvarna chainsaw, but I'm not going to cut the whole thing up. You know, I'm going to use that on the stump, so I've got something reliable there. Uh, and you know that, that may be a, a sore spot for this saw but we're gonna find out we're gonna put some gas in it fire it up get it assembled and uh, and see if we've got any major problems right off the bat the G660 Pro what makes it a pro model well it's not just the hydro dipped let me get you in a little bit closer we'll take a nice close-up look at the saw some of the parts um, Tyne gin wall broke carburetor uh oh that doesn't sound like a real warm Walbro carburetor to me. All right, let's get in here, take a closer look at it. First thing I want to do is get this handle on there, and I noticed it's got this uh, guard on the bottom. It's aluminum. It's I was going to take it off there to save a little weight, because uh, with a saw like this, I mean, every pound counts. But let's go ahead and put the handle on here. Now, it has got um, a screw set here. So all this stuff is what was included in this orange uh, pouch that came with it. So if you're looking for your screws, uh, look no further than the pouch. There we go, we got the handle on. Uh, no big issues here, uh, just the couple screws there. Um, looks like, yeah these are a little difficult to get all the way snug down there the first time you screw them in because you're Again, forming new threads. So, gotta really wrench them down in there. 
get everything seated. I think that is about where we need to be though. All right, so we got those. We got these down here. Those are fully seated, just basically until you get the aluminum collapsing, I guess. Uh, as far as putting the dogs on, you got two little ones that go into the cover here. Um, and then back here, you've got one with some blue Loctite that goes in there, and then a little bit longer one that goes in there with a nut on the back. Um, this little deal here fits on there perfect got a little retainer in there no problems there um, I'm gonna edit that out so I mean if you don't know how to put dogs and assemble a chainsaw you probably shouldn't be running a chainsaw right let's be honest with each other here um, if you can't do that amount of work to a chainsaw putting a big sharp blade on a powerful 92 cc chainsaw and trying to run it through some wood probably isn't for you but, uh, let's continue on here. Um, now that looks really choked up. That looks really choked up. I don't think we need all that stuff on there. I mean, this, I think this is designed to where it keeps this from collapsing in on itself. And here we've got, I mean, this is just plastic. Well, no. It's got a little bit of rubberized stuff going on to it there. You know what? I'm not going to run that because this is... Now, it's probably going to blow out the center of that. But what you might be able to do here is break off some of these tabs. Because it is... It's basically like a big baffle inside of here. Where were we here? My dog was just chewing on a cardboard box. She would have had it all over the front yard. Uh, okay, so this thing, this is meant to keep this seated, you know, so it doesn't like pull it through and it's got a hard stop, but I'm pretty sure we can get rid of some. See, there's a lot of these fins in here. I think we could break off about half of those and still get the desired effect, but anywho, um, I really want to take this apart and you know what, I'm going to take some of it apart here just to uh, just to see what we're working with because I don't want to get into some sort of tuning you know situation and find out the plug wire wasn't even connected on there literally was it was just pushed on there a little bit so there you go uh, make sure you know you go through your saw before you actually um, go and try to put it in the wood it could bite you. Now with this handle on here, I don't know if this screw is going to make it. Yeah, I just did. And let's see, we got one down here. Is it just the two that hold this on? Maybe we should get some baseline compression numbers and stuff, huh? Yeah. Oh, there's one more down there. So there's two on this side, one on this side to get this top cover off. Yeah. And it may or may not come off with the spark plug still in there. Some of these uh, steel saws you have to actually take the spark plug out to get the top cover off. Not this one. That's nice. Alright, those are all the same size. They do have the grommets in there. Uh, just like they would from the steel dealer. Now this is supposed to have a... Um, supposed to have a meteor piston. Let me see if we can see some insignia on there. All right, I'm actually just too excited to get this thing started. I got some Red Armor 40 to 1 in it. Uh, I haven't even checked the carb settings, so uh, this will be, this should be like a, a typical user experience. Uh, steel system is all the way down to choke with the trigger pulled in. Uh, up one brings it off a choke, and then you click the trigger to bring it into run. So we'll go down to choke, and we'll just see how many times it 
takes to get it pulled over. Um, decomp is definitely a good thing on this, uh, and it works really nice. <laughs> definitely pre-run at the factory. You could smell gas in the uh, in the fuel system there. All right, take it off a choke. That was a pretty good first heat cycle. All right, while we're waiting for it to cool down, let's pull this carb off of there, see if it says Walbro on it. Um, even if it does, that doesn't necessarily mean it is actually Walbro, you know. Since it says on the manual, Jin Jin Walbro. Jin Jin, Tim Jin Walbro. But it does say Italy Meteor Piston, Italy Cable Ring, Italy Nicosil Cylinder. Italy Nicosil Treatment Cylinder. So that doesn't necessarily mean Meteor. Uh, yeah, it doesn't specifically say Meteor on the cylinder. NDK spark plug, wrap handle, strong handle grip. It does have the, uh, the same sort of instructions. So, I mean, it looks like they just pretty much copied Steele's, you know, like filling instructions and all that. Make sure to read through that. That's good, good information. All right, so we're back in here. Uh, to get in and at the carb, you're gonna need an eight millimeter. And here we go. So, yeah, these saws, I, I purchased this saw for about probably what it was worth, right? About uh, 320 bucks, I think, with uh, tax and shipping from China. Um, the, the USA one, it was somewhere right around $500. Um, and then I think without the sale price, there's somewhere around $600. Uh, don't quote me on that. Of course, you know, whatever the price is right now is whatever the price is. Depending on when you watch this, it could be completely different. But yeah, for the USA stock, um, it was, you know, 20% more than... Uh, than what this one was waiting on it coming on the slow boat but I mean these are not expensive saws and you know of course that video I did showing that I was very disappointed when I received one of these um, you know that was imagined to be a real steel chainsaw uh, it, it's not the same quality none of the pieces are it can't be uh, they sell these things in the 10 pack, and the average price per saw in the 10 pack is like 160, 170 bucks, something like that, for the non-pro models. I mean, you're, you're obviously, you know, the old saying, you get what you pay for. Uh, that pertains specifically to stuff like this. It's cheap. It was made cheap, and uh, it shows up in the price. You know. So I'm anticipating, again, a lot of the rubber is going to be failing, a lot of the um, things that you take for granted from steel not to fail could fail on this one, like that clone saw that I bought. Uh, yeah, it says Walbro on it. 16. That even looks like, you know, the Walbro stamping. Already got a little bit of seepage of gas coming out of the fuel line. Yep. But anyways, uh, that ran pretty good. I mean, what do you guys think down there in the comments? Did that seem like it was a pretty good running, pretty good running saw? I mean, I, I mean, honestly, 
uh, with it being pre-ran at the at the factory like that, I'm you know pretty confident I could just dig it into some wood as it sits and uh, and pretty much start cutting with it. Again, the fit up and fitment is not going to be what a steel size, so you just got to kind of take all that with a grain of salt. Let's uh, let's give it a second to cool down, just because I'm going to give this thing every opportunity to be a good saw, because I paid good money for it, right? And <laughs> I, I don't again normally buy new things, and matter of fact. When I was packing up my 455, I was watching that video, and I was like, yeah, this is the first, last, and only new saw I, I bought, <laughs> but I actually bought the uh, G111 new. So I bought, this is my third new out-of-the-box, you know, chainsaw, um, but I only really bought it because it was on sale, and I really only bought the G111 because it was on sale at the time also. Um... I got it for 300 bucks. It was about the same deal. They were having like a 30% off sale. So I ended up getting, well, maybe not. Maybe it was like 25% off on the G111. So I ended up getting the bar and chain for essentially free. I paid 300 bucks for that one. Just over 300, 322 for this one. And um, yeah, like I said, it's it's got its place. If you need a big saw for a single use type of situation, um, and you don't want to run to steel and pay fifteen hundred plus dollars. I think you know you could probably resell it for about the price that you paid for it uh, to somebody that wasn't willing to wait for the the slow boat transport. But let's let this cool down and then uh, then we'll fire it back up and I'll put the tack on it. All right, we are completely cooled down. Let's get some measurements on it here as far as our RPMs. According to steel, it should be right around 3,000 on the idle, and it maxes out at 13.5 uh, for the 660s. So let's uh, see what it does. Alright man, well that was the first look at the G660 Pro, again no markings on the cylinder to be able to tell, but it didn't say Meteor in the book, did it? It just said Italy, Nicosil, kind of leads you to believe that it's a Meteor, but I'm not buying it. And then the carburetors, the Jin Jin, Walbro, a little questionable there, but again I think it does serve a, a good niche with you know somebody that needs a big saw for not a long time. Uh, on these saws, again, the uh, clone saws, they aren't built like a steel saw. All the rubber is going to fail on it much you know, earlier than it would on a steel saw. Uh, the electronics, uh, the carburetors, typically, that's why I got this one, because it's got a Walbro carburetor. But you could hear, even on the tack there, it was starting to break up a little bit on the high end. It almost sounded like a limited tack, or a limited coil. Uh, where it was kind of like hitting a rev limiter type of sound to it. I, I don't know um, But yeah, I mean it revved out Time will tell uh, I've got a big job I've got a big dead oak tree that I'm gonna bring down and I'm gonna be using this uh, in the You know capacity that a 90 cc saw should be used cutting up big stuff 36 inch, you know full comp and uh, And going through some big wood so make sure to subscribe to see this thing actually being used in some big wood in some big red oak and we'll see if we can't just break the crank off right there at the clutch like the other one that I got. <laughs>
Anyways, that's going to do it for today on Man Time. Get out there. Have you some man time, too.